Hey guys, so I was just thinking about video ideas and what I could do and I thought about doing um, a college related one now I've graduated from BU after four years and I was thinking about doing like top things I regret not doing in college and I was like mm, that's kind of negative uh, so I then kind of flipped around and here's this video of top things I don't regret doing in college so if that interests you just keep on watching and we shall start um, from 10 to 1 I guess um no i need my glasses on i'm too blind to see this okay <laughs> so starting with number 10 and these are kind of grouped in some kind of like topic so first is like kind of academic wise so with number 10 it might be shocking to some people but not having a 4.0 gpa i don't regret it at all and the reason being for that is I feel like when I first entered college, I was like kind of coming off that high school high where you needed to get all the best grades, get into college and everything. Um, but then I realized grades aren't everything, especially my senior year um, or really the semester before when I studied abroad, my spring semester, junior year, I realized that grades aren't everything and that I was spending so much time studying for these exams and everything that was kind of missing a whole chunk of being at college, especially being on campus. There was so much I wasn't taking advantage of and I didn't really have a lot of like solid memories to reflect back on. So my senior year is really when I stopped stressing out so much about grades and I'm definitely happy I stopped doing that, especially since my senior year did end a little abruptly and short. Um, and even, I know you might be thinking, what about jobs, about internships? And while GPA should be good, um, people don't want like this perfect robot and things like experiences and soft skills are really important to people as well because there's going to be a ton of people with really good GPAs but if you can kind of um, differentiate, differentiate yourself by having really cool experiences or getting involved in a bunch of really great things that matter to you that's a better way to kind of set yourself apart and I end up graduating with a three point three three I believe GPA and I still got a really good job that I'm looking forward to so you can do it all without a really perfect GPA um, so next for number nine uh, would be changing my major three times and I know the idea of changing a major um, especially if you go to university and changing from one college to the other can be super stressful to people but I actually don't really regret it looking back at it because I got to explore a few different areas. I originally was going into college as a nursing major and then I switched into an economics major and I thought I was going to minor in the question school of business at BU so I have a business minor but then I really liked my minor way more than my major. My major was killing me <laughs> so I then ended up switching and graduated with a major in business administration and then also within that you have a concentration you can choose and I changed that a whole bunch of times too because um, I thought I needed a certain concentration to get a good job or whatever but really I ended up going with the one I was passionate about which was law and I don't regret that at all because it gave me classes to take that I really really enjoyed especially at this last semester I really got to dive deep into the whole area of law now the next kind of area is more so about friendships relationships all of that fun jazz so with number eight the thing I don't regret is not joining a sorority this is something I really thought I really wanted to do my freshman year then I held it off until sophomore year spring semester to go through the whole recruitment process and that's what made me realize that maybe this isn't the best thing for me. I wasn't happy with it. I thought I had to act a certain way to get into the sororities, especially any like top sororities, you know, that whole thing. But I, yeah, I just felt myself trying to act a certain way to get into them. And like looking back at it, I've had so much more like, free time to kind of explore and meet people naturally more organically and also that would have sent me back a whole lot of money because I don't know about at your school but the dues at Boston University even without having um, sorority houses at BU are still really expensive and I'm glad that I didn't put throw all that money into sororities and buying stuff for your little and whatnot um yeah because as is with my students loans enough money has already been spent so I do not regret that and 
I'm sure if you don't join a sorority, you will also be able to make friends no matter where you are. However, I do know in Southern schools, it's much more of a thing. So this is all just from my experience and things I don't regret at my school. Uh, going on to number seven, making new friends every year, kind of every semester. I really don't have an experience where I was like best friends with my first roommate while I was at a different school, but also, yeah, that didn't last very long. Um, and from people of my freshman, sophomore year, really too much, I don't really keep in contact with those people. Not because anything really happened with most of those people, it just kind of drift apart because you are changing so much in college. Um, and yeah, I kind of went into college knowing that I would kind of switch friend groups a whole bunch and I didn't feel bad if I started drifting from people and found myself kind of um, shifting towards wanting to hang out with other people more so, <laughs> you know, because like I said, you are growing a ton. It's only natural that you're going to drift from group to group. That being said, I do have um, really like one person from like my freshman, sophomore year-ish that we're really good friends with. And I have a bunch of like lifelong friends, I believe, from my time there. But I also know that I'm only going to continue to meet other people as I go through jobs and whatnot. So no stress really if you do find that you're not sticking with one big friend group. I also am just someone that always has kind of liked being more of a chameleon. Um, I always kind of talked that way like in high school where I didn't really have one set friend group. I just kind of liked spreading myself around and then you also get to learn about different people and different backgrounds and you're not just stuck in one kind of like thought bubble. Um, which I felt also helped me really grow. And next on the whole like relationship spectrum that I don't regret is I didn't have a boyfriend most of my time in college. And there were, of course, times where I'm like, oh, this would have been so cute if I had a boyfriend to go to this event with me or whatever. But really, I know personally I'm someone that when I have a boyfriend, kind of, I feel compelled to like, do things with them and like ask them um not so much for permission but you know you gotta let them know what's going on all the time and not having that kind of tether really helped me grow more helped me you know explore different friend groups like i just said and it really allowed me to make choices for myself even if it would just be subconsciously a choice that was dependent on them and their thought process it really allowed me to know that I was making all these choices on my own, especially senior year, I recommend, you know, considering not looking for anything super serious because when you're looking for jobs and whatnot, if you are dating someone and they're looking for jobs in a specific area, it might stress you out and make you also want to just limit yourself to jobs in that area as well. So I was able to accept the job offer and everything knowing that it was what I wanted and not because of any kind of subconscious thoughts going on in my head, which was great. <laughs> um, and then also having a boyfriend, you know, you can go to parties, you can go out to clubs and everything and not feel guilty about leaving your man at home or your girlfriend, whatever it may be. Um, and you can also just like, I don't know, not have that guilt if you're talking to someone, even if it is just friendly conversation, I know I could feel kind of guilty about that even if I'm not thinking in any kind of romantic way um so yeah that kind of sums up the whole relationship sides about my anti-regrets if that's even a word <laughs> and next we have number five things I don't regret is having internships I had a total of three different internships during my time in college two of which were during semesters um my first one was at the New England Aquarium and that was my fall of junior year. And then the next semester when I was studying abroad in Australia, our um, college program also had us set up with internships for about half the semester. So I had an internship at BDC Travel in Sydney, Australia. And then right after that one, I had an internship at National Grid um, over the summer. And I know three can be a lot to some people, but it really did help by putting them uh, during semesters as well and 
I know that can be a lot to handle, but I feel because of my financial situation, I wasn't able to fully commit and like, you know, pay for rent in the city and whatnot to have an internship. And Boston is a place where there are tons of internships. So I liked being able to just kind of, I was already paying for my housing to go to school. So also having that housing to have an internship just worked out financially really well for me and just logistically well. Um, so that's something I would definitely explore. And also my first internship was a nonprofit, so I didn't get paid for it, but I would definitely recommend exploring different options and different scholarships, whether the scholarships are with your school or with the program that you're interning with, whatnot, because there are scholarships out there that will help you give you grants to uh, complete those internships if you do need to get paid, because that was something I was definitely worried about. So I got a grant, so it was almost like I was getting paid to do that internship, but I got that money up front, if that makes sense. And then those internships, um, more so than just upping your resume, they also are ways for you to feel really productive and explore your interests. And I also made great friends at each of my internships. So I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Next, we have number four, and that would be becoming an RA. Not only was it a great on-campus job for me, sorry if you can hear noise outside, got some loud people in the neighborhood. Um, not only was it a great on-campus job for me and it was more meaningful um, to me, the work than working in the dining hall. And it also was minim more, much more minimal work than other on-campus jobs. And I know RA positions at different colleges can be really, really different. So definitely explore what exactly an RA job at your campus looks like, but for me, it also really helped out with my finances because it paid for both room and board completely. So that saved me a ton of money um, for my senior year, I was an RA. But also the other RAs in my neighborhood on campus were really great and I got a ton of great friends. Like most of like my go-to friends now are all people I was just RAs with. So I really, really loved the experience and I kind of wish I did my junior year, but I couldn't because it was study abroad and I wouldn't have given that up. So definitely explore it as an option. Number three, more about on-campus housing is I don't regret staying in on-campus housing for all four years of my college experience. It saves time on commuting and you're also just on campus all the time. So you have more time to socialize with people uh, and you're more kind of encouraged to attend school events because you don't have to think about going back to campus. Like you're always there and you're surrounded by all people that go to your school. So it's easier to just more organically meet people. And then I also, uh, most semesters I had a dining plan as well, which was just another easy way to meet people and just have quick little times to socialize with your friends because you always have to eat. So it was easier for me to just make plans to grab lunch with someone at the dining hall versus having to like think about a whole plan to do. Um, so I definitely really appreciated the dining hall being that little way to catch up with friends and make sure we were staying in contact in an easy kind of like non-committal way. Um, and then also with renting apartments, renting an apartment now for the first time, not on campus. And it's a lot of time and hassle finding a place, first of all, that fits all of your needs and your budget. And then you might have to find roommates. The company I'm renting through luckily sets me up with roommates, so I don't really have to do that part of it. Um, but paying bills and dealing with landlords, I've heard some horror stories. So even though it might be more expensive to stay on campus, you gotta weigh the pros and cons and sometimes it might end up being about the same money anyways when it comes down to utilities and commuting and whatnot so definitely fully weigh your options when thinking about housing um, during college for number two we have that classic college kid study abroad changed my life but yes my number two Thing I don't regret doing in college was studying abroad. I studied abroad in Sydney, Australia, and it was the best time of my life. I got to live in Sydney for four months, and I never ever would have thought 
I would do something like that. Um, it was kind of a last second decision, but I'm so happy I did it. It, first of all, saved me a bunch of money. It was cheaper for me to study abroad in Australia than it was to stay on campus. And that also, it still was cheaper for me to have that experience when I include all my trips that I took there too. Like I went and explored basically the whole east coast of Australia, went to Melbourne, I went to um, Cairns where the Great Barrier, Reef, Great Barrier Reef is, and I scuba dove, scuba dived, scuba dove, scuba dived? Hmm not sure of that one, but in the Great Barrier Reef. And I went to Fiji for a weekend. I went to Thailand and that was cheaper than me at BU. And I definitely would say it was kind of more fun. <laughs> we have the number one thing I don't regret doing in college, transferring colleges. If you want a whole bunch of detail into this whole experience, I do have a video on my channel that you can go find about transferring from Seton Hall to Boston University. I did so after my first semester and I'm so happy I did not wait any longer because I love that I had basically my whole experience at BU. If you don't waste time at a place you don't like, if you know you can be happier and more successful elsewhere. Um, yeah, I just knew within a few weeks that it wasn't the right fit. I just had a feeling and I figured I might as well apply to some other schools, see where I can get in. And I got into Boston University, which is academically more challenging, which is what I wanted. It is in right in Boston. Seton Hall was um, is in New Jersey, right outside New York City. I thought I would love being in New York all the time, but I just found myself getting to be an angry and angrier person. Um, yeah, it just wasn't the right fit for me personally. If you go there and love it, power to you. But for me personally, it just wasn't working. Um, so yeah, definitely if you're considering transferring or whatnot, check out that video on my channel. But that is all of the things I don't regret doing in college. Well, I'm sure there's a bunch more I can think of off the top of my head, but those are kind of my top 10. See you guys in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe if you so feel like it. Leave any questions you might have down in the comments below as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.